Hi, this is Deb Watson, and in this video, you'll learn nine nifty ways you can improve your landscapes. The first tip is to simplify. You don't need to paint every tree branch to capture the essence of your landscape. It's easier and your paintings will look better. Tip two is to simplify your colors. Try out the colors you think will work best on scrap paper. I'll include information on the blue pigments in the free lesson. But for this, but pick a brown and a couple blues for this painting. This is all my blues. Start with the background and work forward. The farthest back is the sky. Mix more paint than you think you'll need. Tip three is to start soft. Work wet on wet to get nice blends and soft edges that look really far away. Start applying thicker color at the top and lighter, more watery color below for a graded wash. Here's my blue mixed with a little brown. And then I picked up a little more water and blend it down. Variation is the most important tip. Paint the background trees on while the sky is still wet. Because they need to be darker, mix more of the paint into your wash. Don't get out another color, use the same colors and mix them. Start near the bottom to see how much your paint will spread with wet on wet. Did you notice that I'm using a smaller brush now? There they go. I like that. If your trees spread too far, let your sky dry for a minute or two. Or you can tilt the top of your paper up and let gravity help keep the tree color down at the bottom. You don't want the distant trees to go completely across the horizon line like a fence. So I'm adding the middle trees with almost no color left in my brush, so they'll be much lighter. Now is where you can add even darker, thicker paint. Once again, the same color, just more paint, so that you get variation. I want my color to spread up, so I tilt the top of my paper down. As it dries, the dark is fading out again, just because it's so wet. So one more time, I'm adding more dark for variation. You could dab up a little for a lighter area, or just cautiously keep adding darker here and there till it dries. While that dries, I dab out a suggestion of a sun or a moon. And next, I'm going to paint the river. The variation in the river is the focal point of this picture. So it gets tips two, three, and four. Simple, soft, with variation. Start by wetting the river. I start with light, pure blue, and then it gets darker as I go toward the bottom edge.
just like all the other wet on wet, it tends to all spread together. So I'm going to keep working it as it dries. You can lift up the top where you want it lighter or paint more dark on at the bottom. Then dry. For realism, I'm adding a line of dark around the edges of the river, except for the curve on the left side. Now that it's dry, I want to add a bit of shading and the white snow. If you mix cerulean blue to ultramarine blue, it makes a wonderful color for snow. I wet the snow and I put some of that mix on the back and around the edges. Finally, tip number five. Evaluate your background before you start details like trees. It's easy right now to make your sky or your background lighter or dark, but once the trees are on, it's almost impossible to get in and fix it. For the trees, I want a black. So I mix my dark blue with brown right from the tube. I start on the trunks with a number six brush. These trunks have some variation in size and there's variation in the distance between the trees. A lot of people tend to line them up like fence posts without even realizing it. So pay attention and add variation. For the thin limbs at the top of the trees, you're going to get better results if you use a special brush called a liner or a rigger or a script. Start at the bottom and paint up. Get some arm action going for a graceful sweep. Don't keep all your branches separate. Have some cross over other branches. Don't make it all evenly full. Have some areas fairly open with only a few branches and others full with many branches. That goes back to variety, variety, variety.
For more realism, you can use very watery paint to drag your brush across the tops of some branches on the dry paper to suggest some tiny branches or leaves. Keep it very light and dab it with your finger to smudge the edges. This is a nice effect to add to bare trees. We're not done yet. Use reflections to add interest to your landscape. Of course you can add reflections in a river, but you can even add a mud puddle to an area of road that needs something. You can paint reflections with short, jagged, horizontal lines or just pull the reflection down, rinse out your brush, and do a few horizontal strokes over the area to give it the look of a reflection. My reference photo had some grasses sticking out of the snow and I like those so I'm going to put them in here. This front area needs something but I don't want too many grasses so I'm going to re-wet the area and add a bit of shading. Now, the bottom edge of trees and grasses can look fairly abrupt where they stick out of the snow. You don't want to draw tree roots. Tip number eight, seat the grasses and trees with some shading at the bottom. You could also add shadows to seat them. Just don't overdo it. Last, use a damp Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser to soften or lift any edges you don't like. I have several videos showing you how to use this, but it's very simple. Just gently wipe the spots you want to lift or soften. You can also use opaque white paint, watercolor or acrylic to add some nice snowy details. I like adding a snow reflection on the side of the river. Of course, you may have to paint it several times before it shows up. A few thin white ripples are nice. And you can dot in some falling snow or spatter it on. For more variety, add thin white branches to some of your trees. My river really faded out, 
So I'm going to darken that up while I recap. Simplify your landscape and your color scheme. Work wet on wet for soft, far away edges, but don't paint anything all one flat color. Always add variation. Evaluate and adjust your values in your background before you add details. Paint thin, elegant tree branches and use reflections to add interest. Seat your trees at the bottom with shading or shadows and use Mr. Clean or Opaque White for cleanup and details at the end. That was it. I hope you like it. Please give me a thumbs up. And here are the other examples of paintings with limited palettes. Most of my paintings only have five colors or less. It's an easy way to improve your work before you even start painting. Happy painting!